Well, in our last conversation, we started talking a little bit about uh, software programming in addition to uh, using, the, using the hardware, and you touched a little bit on uh, neural drive. Do either of those topics relate to anything that you can discuss within the strength training, the powerlifting uh, world specifically? Uh, well, uh, the short answer is yes. The ability to uh, create strength begins with the thought. Uh, it's called the engram, and uh, you don't have to think when you walk. You're running a tape. That engram for walking is encoded probably more in your spinal cord than it is in the cortex, but nonetheless, that's an encoded tape. And it sends out sequenced signals and uh, th th they're timed and coordinated. Um, in strength, the software part of it is to optimize the density of that neural drive from wherever its origin is down the highway of nerves to the muscle and get the densest contraction you can possibly get. Uh, that density is created with skill and software and strength of mind, uh, emotional state. Uh, if you want to ruin it, smile. If you want to ruin it, have a happy demeanor. If you want to densify it, you get a little bit angry, a little bit focused, a little bit of that state of mind where you want to kill. Now, it's to kill a bar or to kill a performance, obviously. Your game day phase. Uh, uh, yeah. you, you must have it. It's absolutely essential. So you can densify the neural drive. And then to enable that software component, you then develop the hardware uh, to teach your body and educate it to carry even more dense signal. So we might do uh, exercises like the bench press, for example, where, again, it's not to put up big numbers, it's to train the neural drive. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going through stiffening areas of different, uh, different parts of the body to lower, to grip harder than we need to, to focus on lowering it down the ramp as we're coming up to the sticking point and we're transitioning from anterior deltoid and pec major to the back of the arm, at that point, there may be a sticking point there. We're going to crush, spread, twist, all of these tricks and cues to teach more density in the, uh, uh, the neural drive and, and just conquer that, that sticking point and, and tune the software uh, and the hardware. Um, but uh, there, there's so much to all of this, right. to, to get rid of the neuronal overflow, stiffen parts of your body that many think, well, this isn't involved, but it is. It's all about steering that neural yeah. drive to where, where we need it. And, and, uh, yeah, I, I get really frustrated with some of my athletes. I see them, they're warming up and they're, at, they're playing to the weight that's on the bar. They're sloppy, they're not focused, and I'm like, you have to practice this like it's your... You have to brace, you have to you, you walk through all the steps, visualize it. Every time that you're walking to that bar is a chance for you to practice that, like it is like it is the max attempt. Um, <laughs> Chris, I don't know why I'm here teaching. You should be teaching this. <laughs> well, that, that's exactly it, right. It is, yeah. and, and I, also, I, I, I commonly have seen this be the where an injury has been initiated because let's say someone's a 500 pound squatter and they got 225, uh, they just go through the motions and something gets a little off. Then they start working up and they actually injure themselves with the 450. Right. But it was initiated with not actually doing a proper squat at 225 because they're right. just going through the motions to get the muscles warm. And there's so much more to it than that. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, if, if you, well, you mentioned the warm up, and I know uh, privately we've had conversations about uh, uh, the warm up. Do, do you want to? Head in that direction. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's talk about warm-ups. Uh... <laughs> well, uh, you know uh, my attitude that uh, more often than not, I have to shorten the warm-up than the opposite of lengthening it. And and I, I think in today's culture, there's far too much warming up to the detriment of the final uh, performance. So the warm-up, if we can formalize it into uh, three different. Uh, stages, shall we say, and the first stage being heavily influenced by biomechanics. So 
wherever your body has come from, say it's been sitting in a car, say you've been standing, if you've been standing, you've put a little dent in the cartilage of your knee and your hips, and if you just started to put heavy load on that, that dent would create a stress riser, a material stress riser, and, and, and you've got an injury potential at a micro level there. So just to round out the joints and get things moving with no stress risers, biomechanical thought is where our warm-up would uh, start. The second level we would then go to physiology. We've already talked about the game face. Get the hormonal level where you need to densify that neural drive. Get the blood pressure set and primed and optimized. Uh, so that's, that's the second part. The third part is all neural, neural priming. Are you ready to boom, just explode? Now we can create that neural prime simply by, if I came up to an athlete and used a very Russian technique, I got into their face, I got here, beach, now lift. And that, that's all it, I needed, I needed a bit of a shock. And we can use different You're good tools at that, by the way. To, <laughs> to, to, to create that shock. And, uh, well, you've seen me play act. If, yeah. if I'm with a patient with very bad back pain, I'm, I'm, I'm their mother. Right. I'm coaching them through, this is, we're, we're going to get there. But if it's an athlete who is getting ready to kill, I'm not a pleasant person, but nor, right. nor can I be. Exactly. I, I have to pull that instinct out of their body. But anyway, there it is. Now, we've, now we're primed neurologically, and they're ready to explode. Um, so there would be the three levels. Uh, but so often I'll see, oh, someone's stretching. Well, athletes are tuned elastic machines where they store and recover elastic energy very strategically. And stretching, to me, is about tuning the spring. When you're building your, your vehicles that you do, you spend great effort tuning the stiffness of that suspension so it works with that engine, for that yeah. terrain, for that horsepower. You get it wrong, and you're just losing and ener leaking energy through through softness or being over stiff and, and whatever. Yep. You'll break something if you're over stiff. So the mobility and the stretching is only to tune the stiffness and elasticity to store and recover as you need it. That that sounds very similar to like well, what we kind of preach here, and some of my frustration I see when I go places or read stuff online. But to me, like. I see people get down and they, they're laying on a, on the floor, rolling around on rollers for like 40 minutes. It makes me want to go to sleep. That doesn't make me want to train. Is that affecting the hormonal aspect that you're talking about? Or, I mean, it just, well, I, I you're relaxing. It, and, it is very relaxing, and I don't know whether it's hormonal as, as much as it is neurological. So stretching uh, reduces the sensitivity of stretch receptors mm -hmm. and these kinds of things, and I want to heighten them. So just to do mobility ruins we, performance so we do, at the elite level. Like if we're, if we're going to squat, we may do some things to engage, engage the glutes, um, work the adductors, work the balance of that, the VMO. Like they will do hip airplanes or they're actually movement drills that we'll walk through. And then any, like again, squatting, the only stretching I might have somebody do is if somebody's got like, let's say some thoracic mobility. And if we don't open it up, they're actually going to be, you know, Livering somewhere else in the spine that we don't want to because we need to get them some shoulder mobility But we're not actually stretching any of this stuff. Oh. We're just working on hey, let's let's get it cued Let's get it primed. Let's get it fired. Okay now if we need to get in position Maybe we'll stretch those other areas that aren't actual right. movers so we can then engage those lats get that plug back into the Get those shoulders plugged into the core and that's kind of the concepts that we use which sounds pretty pretty similar to what you're It's you're, not you're pretty preaching. similar. So, it's exactly <laughs> similar <laughs> Yeah, for, for a power lifter, never stretch outside of, of the power lift. That's insane. As you're dropping down into the hole, I want you to be at your elastic limit so that um, I don't have to overcompensate for that loss of elastic stiffness with more muscle. But you give me maximum muscle with the limit of that elastic. That's what lifting suits do. They provide artificial stiffness. Right. I want you to have to pull down into that deep <laughs> squat. And now I've got I, full I, elastic recoil with some muscle. Boom. That's, that's, that's exactly happens. what I think, too. So, okay. Yeah. 
Well, it isn't what you think. I, I, I think once you got the research again, to back it. So, and you've got the content validity that uh, it works. And if you were doing it wrong, you wouldn't be where you are. So, probably not. Probably not. So, uh, again, uh, you, you're right on with your uh, uh, concept of uh, optimizing mobility just enough to take you to where you need to load, but don't stretch outside of that. Right. Even with runners. Uh, people, some of them are surprised when I say, "Don't stretch outside your running range." What you mean? I don't do the uh, ham the the uh, what's this muscle called? Achilles stretches <laughs> before I do my uh, marathon, and yeah, that's why you're slow for the first yeah. two miles. You've just right. stretched away yeah. all your springs and stiffen up, and yeah. you'll actually use less muscle and run uh, more efficiently yeah. and further. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not against mobility as all. Like we were talking about with yeah. bu building a. We were talking about lifting your vehicle. Well, the, the you know the more mobile we make that suspension, the more we've got to add stability to match that. And we need those things. But right before you train that movement, you don't want to loosen it up. Right. So, uh, right before you want to maximize your performance utilizing it, that's not the time for it. So, exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think. Uh, I don't think I have any. What are we, what are we on for time? Eleven minutes. Eleven minutes. That's pretty good. Want to call it there? Sure. Okay. That gives us two little pieces I think will be pretty good. Yeah. yeah we'll use them as you Distal <laughs> mobility for proximal uh, stability. And a lot of uh, what Stu was talking today about, you know, that when are you strong, when are you loose? When are you strong, when are you loose? And uh, that pulsing effect. Uh, so the first thing I like to have anybody do is basically just put it behind their head. Right here. And start with a pendulum swing. Okay. And the reason we do that is just a little bit of assessment right up front. We don't want to have somebody take this, this weight and try to go like this and not have the ability to do that and you cause a lot of damage, which would be. <clears throat> More recently, I've been playing with uh, actually doing this, making the, the hard and soft even more difficult or challenging. Backwards. a number of top uh, power lifters that are uh, successfully using this and, and uh, reporting significant gains. Actually, I know a number of uh, physical therapists and chiropractors are actually using it in some of their practice as well nowadays. Um, so uh, it's an uh, it's, uh, interesting product. I really love the methodology because it's not just, if you just get up here, it's all about practicing being better and cleaner with the movement. It's not adding weight. It's not going to fatigue failure. It's none of those things ever. We want to be better and cleaner constantly. If you start doing that, you're actually going to end up with shoulder, elbow, wrist, a whole bunch of trauma like that if you just go, hey, this is mace swing. Because if you look it up, you get online, you'll see a bunch of people do it for uh, <coughs> endurance, work capacity, um, stuff like that, or they show off how much weight they can swing. We don't want to do that. So that's not, uh, not what we're accomplishing. So we want to take this very nice loadable product that you can make micro adjustments to and then take that movement, integrate it with that, plug in those shoulders into your core, getting stability when you need it, and then, uh, and then working those shoulders through the full range of motion and everything that supports the shoulder structure. And I am known for demonstrating this without my shirt just because you can, you can really see all this structure just lock in every time it Take does it. Take it off. No. Do it. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Right. Is, is, the, is, the, meat, is, the, is the meat here? The meat's not here. Okay, I'll get away with it. Don't show him any. Don't show him any pictures. Okay. So. <laughs> I meet my my diet coach when I actually decide to listen. When I haven't listened to him for about six months. So. Guys, this is okay to So. Four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is actually valuable. You can actually see the structure lock in. Right. So, shut Anybody notice how grounded to the floor I am? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. No. You need some pictures now? If you'd like to support the production of further content and maximize your athletic performance, check out kabukistrength.net. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and the methods to maximize your performance. There's constantly adding new products to our site, so please check it out. All that's left is for you to bring the attitude.